All eyes on the U.S. Federal Reserve as investors await key policy decisions today. Meantime, Samsung's profits tumble over 50% in second quarter 2019 due to falling memory chip prices. And Iran's cabinet approves plan to slash four zeros from the national currency, the real. Thank you for joining us. This is Business Incorporated. I am Bussi Namafaya and I'm sitting in today for your show host, Chimezobi Wago. Let's get started. Everyone's looking at the U.S. Federal Open Market Committee announcement later today. The monetary policy decision is a critical one. The consensus amongst most economists and analysts suggests that the Fed will, cut its, uh, will do its first rate cut of 35 basis points in over 10 years, taking the Fed Fund's corridor rate to 2.00 or 2.25%. Analysts at Goldman Sachs says the cut on interest rate by a quarter point will be proactive against growing downside risks, the bank added that it does not foresee the Fed starting a full-blown easing cycle in the near time. Meantime, analysts at Standard Chartered expect the committee to lower the federal funds target rate by 25 basis points while foreseeing a growing prospect of a second 25 basis points rate cut in September instead of December. Now, the major markets in Africa appear to be heading towards a negative close today, starting from Nigeria, where the oil share index was down about one-tenth of a percent in today. In South Africa, the GSE oil share index was also about half a percent heading south, while the EGX, that's the uh, Bostechi big cap uh, stocks in the Egyptian market, also 0.4 percent lower at lunchtime. In Kenya, the uh, stock market was 0.39 percent negative on Tuesday. Now let's cross over to the Middle East, where Saudi stocks rose at intraday uh, Wednesday as the earnings at National Commercial Bank boosted financial stocks. Dubai's index was also up 0.23% at midday Nigerian time. On the flip side, you find the Abu Dhabi's uh, stock index down about a quarter of a percent as Abu Dhabi's commercial bank, the country's biggest, second biggest bank, dropped about 0.9% uh, for its third straight day of losses after reporting about 11% drop in its second quarter profit. In Qatar, the index, uh, you can see that they're about 0.8% uh, way down by 1.4% decline in petrochem maker Industries cut out before its earnings report on Thursday. So here we go into Europe, where the stocks are trading slightly lower Wednesday morning as investors await an interest rate decision from the U.S. Federal Reserve. Here is Asutosh Pandey, my colleague at DWTV for Channel Television, are giving us a bit of a rundown on these and top stories making the headlines for today's trading day in Europe. It's good to see you on the show. Pandey, welcome to the program. Thanks a lot for having me. It's good to have you here on the show as well. Okay, so uh, the U.S. FOMC is the biggest story today. How are the traders in Europe bracing for the announcement by uh, Jerome Powell later this evening, 1600 GMT? Well, they are anxiously waiting for that decision, uh, and that's the reason why the markets have been range-bound and rather choppy also, especially after uh, yesterday's threat from President Donald Trump about uh, a possible no deal with China. So uh, that weighed on sentiments, when, and this morning again he chimed in saying that uh, perhaps he was expecting a hefty rate cut from the Fed. Uh, that's, not going to, uh, that's not likely to happen because uh, the markets have, uh, at this point of time, priced in uh, 25 basis points. Uh, and, 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 and anything b b heavier than that would be something of a surprise for the market at this point of time. And it could be a pleasant surprise or, uh, I mean, it remains to be seen which way the market would react then. But having said that, uh, there is still the jury is out on whether there should be a cut at all, in, uh, considering how well the, uh, the U U.S. economy has been per performing, a 2.1 percent growth rate, the consumer spending has been really strong, and, and consumer spending, I mean, it just, uh, just to inform our viewers, it's, it's, it's a critical part of the GDP, 70 percent of it is uh, consumer spending. But then there are the others who feel that the cut should be there because uh, uh, the inflation has been sluggish and also the fact that uh, uh, there should be some sort of insurance policy in an event that uh, global economy slows down further, uh, especially with all these trade tensions around. Yes, uh, Ashutosh, uh, we'll all be listening to Jerome Powell about 1800 hours GMT. But one big story from the Eurozone is the, your GDP, 0.2% was the reading which we saw uh, in the news this morning. Does this meet expectations? 
Well, yes, it's in line with the expectations. The, uh, the Eurozone economy did grow by 0.2%. Expectations were 0.2%, uh, uh, but it's slowed down. It's, uh, it was 0.4% in the previous quarter. And, and, and that's, uh, these are some signs of worry because Spanish economy, if you look at the Spanish economy, that grew at the slowest pace in years, about five year, uh, pay, slowest pace in five years. Then uh, it, Italy, the Italian economy stagnated. It grew flat this time uh, in the uh, well, last quarter, France has, we, we've already reported here, France also had a very tough quarter. Germany has been struggling with all the trade wars going around, so these are tough times. And then there were other numbers about inflation, that is again sluggish, 1.1%, well below the 2% target of ECB. So in all, it gives uh, some anim uh, fresh uh, ammunition to the ECB to actually uh, go ahead and cut, uh, uh, come up with some uh, uh, more monetary easing sooner rather than later. Yes, I'm sure all of that will be part of what the new uh, uh, ECB uh, president will be doing uh, when she takes uh, office, uh, talking about uh, Christine Lagarde. But let's talk about corporate news in any seasons. Uh, where, who's making the big noise today? Uh, is it a KLMA France earnings? What else do you have there? Well, uh, there have been quite a few, yeah, KLM in France, uh, Air France uh, uh, also, but there is Air Airbus. Now, Airbus also had great results, uh, uh, it better than expected. Adjusted operating profit jumped more than 72%. Uh, uh, and, and this company, uh, perhaps remember that Airbus is already on course to becoming the world's biggest uh, aircraft manufacturer. This year it has maintained its target of 890 deliveries and the deliveries have been going strong and Boeing has been struggling with all its max uh, problems and that's the reason why Airbus will again regain the crown of becoming the biggest uh, aircraft manufacturer this year. Then there, is, there were two major banks, BNP Paribas from France. Uh, again, uh, this is Eurozone's uh, biggest bank by assets and they perform exceedingly well, better than expected. Uh, they, were, if, uh, they saw a strong performance in the investment bank and that was held by favorable market conditions. And, uh, and then the, there was, of course, Credit Suisse uh, from Switzerland, e even it beat expectations. And, uh, but the analysts were particularly surprised about how the return on tangible equity at Credit Suisse had touched nearly 10%. Uh, it, it's the highest ever since it uh, went in for uh, some sort of uh, 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 restructuring in 2015. So that's, that's a positive there. Remember, the banks in Europe have been struggling because of these ultra-low uh, interest rates. And here, these are some positive earning reports. Both the shares were up uh, more than 3% uh, in, on their respective indices. Yes, very, very interesting. Earnings, earnings and more earnings. Thank you so much. Uh, Ashutosh Pandey, uh, my colleague at uh, DWTV for Channel Television, out of the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Thank you, and have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank Let's you. continue the conversation from here tomorrow. So the markets, uh, the markets in Asia were mostly negative at the close of the trading day. If you look at the, the chart which I'm looking at, it's just a little bit this way, then it goes all the way flat. That's the market. Look at the trading day. Everyone is awaiting uh, nail-biting on the Fed rate decisions later today. Markets in Hong Kong closed early as the city braces itself for a tropical storm. The Nikkei 225, which is the biggest of the Japanese market, most watch index lived 0.86% with the shares of index heavyweight. Fast uh, retailing uh, declining 1.96%. The topics index also fell 0.66%. Uh, check into the United States where the stocks futures are very early morning in the United States was the uh, futures looking like, just check a minute, okay, it's all looking a little bit negative. Uh, everyone is looking at the, uh, today's decision. The Dow futures, uh, early today, very early, 70 points earlier, indicating positive open for more than 66 points. Most of the, uh, of those uh, futures are now in the red. The Dow is down now by one-tenth of a percent. The S&P 500, negative 0.26%, and the Nasdaq 0.24%. Global Dow, 0.08%. Wall Street. Uh, taking a bit of a dive before they open uh, for the Fair Decision Day. Now let's get going to the corporate news where Samsung Electronics has declared lower profits for the second quarter of this year due to falling memory chip prices. Operating profit for this world's giant came in at 6.6 .6 trillion Korean won. That's about 5.6 billion US dollars, down 55.61% from the same period a year ago. 
The world's largest smartphone maker says its consolidated revenue was 56.13 trillion for N1. Samsung says in a statement that the weakness in price declines in the memory chip market persisted as effects of inventory adjustments by major data center customers. The previous quarters continued despite uh, limited recovery in demand. This is the second consecutive quarter where the South Africa's tech giant operating profit more than halved from the same period year on year. In the three months that ended month of March, Samsung's profit fell about 60% year on year to 6.2 trillion Korean won or 5.3 billion US dollars. Samsung shares tumbled 2.58% in uh, morning trade after the announcement. And this is one announcement coming through from Iran. The country's cabinet has approved a plan to slash four zeros from the national currency, the real. This is called currency redenomination or rebalancing. The government spokesman Ali Rabe told journalists that the redenomination of the currency has been discussed for years as the real's value has plummeted against the U.S. dollar. Uh, Rabbi did not specify whether the plan requires parliamentary support or when it will take effect.